Thanks for coming out and watching the oxymoronic Reddit professional show, where I showcase the best and worst of the internet. Here I comment on brilliant and hilarious comment chains regarding dumb shit on the internet for you to enjoy. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell button so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. Enjoy this week's show. While we're on the subject of homeowners associations, here's the story of how my parents SHOA tried to use a 40-year-old rule to stop them from repairing hurricane damage and got the shaft for their trouble. A few months back, as you all may remember, Florida got pretty beaten up by a couple of hurricanes. My folks lived down there, and while none of the damage that they sustained was life-falteringly horrible or home-destroying, homeowners insurance kicked in and they had some water damage through the roof. They also needed a new one because of all of the shingles that had come off slash debris that had punctured it. My folks looked through roofing options and determined that a metal roof would be a great option to reduce damage slash maintenance on their home. Plus, it would serve as a more energy efficient option with passive solar collection and fewer thermal losses in the summer slash winter. It's more expensive, but my dad was basically our slash personal finance incarnate while I was growing up. He's in his 60s and has finally concluded that he has f you money so long as the community is concerned, so the roof was a good investment. It looked like a win-win-win with that roof. Then they reviewed HOA and saw that, as of 1989, metal roofs are prohibited in the neighborhood, subject to fines and mandatory removal. Reviewing the bylaw further showed that it was clearly referring to older, crappier tin roofs, not a proper metal one like today's market provides, which looks great and has all of those other benefits. My folks wanted to play by the rules, though, and called up the HOA to explain the situation. HOA was friendly and said that they would be looking into that by law, and that my folks weren't the only ones who requested that they be allowed to have a metal roof. My parents couldn't get a roofing contractor in for a few months anyway, too much demand since everyone else's roof got wrecked, so they waited a few weeks and got nothing new out of HOA, tried again a few weeks later. Nothing. After two months of this, they said f it and started construction on the metal roof. Popular opinion in the neighborhood was on their side, and the roof was covered with a tarp that wouldn't last forever. The new roof got installed over the course of a few days, and then we found out the HOA ness. The neighborhood has a nice brick sign out front that says, Welcome to, neighborhood name. It's very classy, very nice, and was very damaged in a hurricane. The HOA was strapped for money due to other repairs slash dues, and some prick had the bright idea to impose as many fines as they could on the neighborhood to pay for these repairs starting with my folks. They served my folks with a letter claiming that they were in violation of the HOA and demanded a $25,000 fine and that they remove it. Which is, of course, absurd. My poor mother is very much a play-by-the-rules sort, and she was worried sick. Dad's ex-Navy and a contract negotiator. He essentially checked his 60-year-old knuckles and said, Oh, you little sh** wanna play, do ya? So they set about researching and making some calls. Poor mom kept waking up at 1am unable to sleep, and I felt terrible for her as she went through this. But then, they had a breakthrough. A few weeks after being served, I'm fuzzy on the timeline since I don't live in Florida, it may have been less, there was essentially a burn them at the stake meeting of the HOA where my parents could defend themselves for an absurdly short amount of time and the HOA could rip into them for daring to defy their wrath. So my mom, because she's more social slash has a better temper than dad, comes up to speak and lets HOA know that they can't do this. HOA murks and says that they sure can, they have a 40-year-old statute saying that they can. Mom says, you do. But I have state law on my side, which supersedes your statute. Turns out, there's a law in Florida stating that an HOA, or really, any regulation, cannot be used to prevent a an eco-friendly improvement from taking place on anyone's private property. And wouldn't you know it, the passive solar of the metal roof counts as an eco-friendly improvement. Turns out, the roofing contractors have dealt with similar stuff before. When dad mentioned what was going on to them, the contracting officer pulled out a few letters of accreditation and a few past cases where the court had determined that their product was eco-friendly and forced the HOA to pay all legal fees. My mom produced all of this for the shitty HOA, who had to admit that this was in fact ironclad. Strapped for money as they were, they couldn't afford to pay a lawyer. HOA, head growls, is that all? Your mother is badass. Congrats to her, and your father. Awesome revenge here. Agreed it's like Op's mom is the diplomat and his dad is, well for when diplomacy doesn't work. You call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiations. Holy shit. Impeachment on the spot. Just how many pitchforks were there? I need to know this too. That part of Op's story felt so damn good to read. Not many. The whole neighborhood has, at most 100 houses in it, maybe. 
I moved out in 2009 and only come back for holidays, my memory is fuzzy. Mom just needed a simple majority on her side, which she had. I've posted before about how I took out a corrupt HOA in a somewhat similar fashion. Lady on the Design and Architecture Approval Committee was harassing new homeowners mostly because she just didn't like the style of their house even if it met the letter of the law. I got enough people to back me and get me elected president. Small community and only took like 15 property owners to get a majority. I took her aside and said at the next meeting she would resign, as would the rest of the board. She puffed up and said she wasn't listening to a newcomer kid, I was 28, who hadn't even built his house out there yet. I then dropped the rule book on her and said the board will be enforcing all rules from now on then. I asked if she'd rather resign or have me have the lawyers draw up a letter saying part of her construction was way off the books and would cost about $25,000 to fix. She resigned at the beginning of the next meeting. When she was done, I also resigned and informed the crowd that my property is now officially up for sale. I'm out. We sold a month later and bailed the shit hole. Moved to an older neighborhood closer to town, three mile commute, and I know all my neighbors. Best part, no HOA. Be careful as members of the board for the HOA. You can be held personally liable for decisions made as a board member. And you've just pissed off a bunch of people. You need to make sure that your parents HOA has directors and officers insurance. And that the insurance is enough to cover multiple lawsuits. I'd also recommend that your parents get an umbrella policy on their home for any other bullshit. Source, handled HOA board insurance claims for a couple of years. In Florida, I've seen angry HOA members literally ruin people's lives over the color of a front door. Truly pro indeed. The HOA was not trying to stop the installation as much as they were trying to swindle your folks. What is the point of an HOA? Seems like that do lots of shitty things. They helped keep neighborhoods segregated after it was illegal to do so explicitly. In theory they keep Joe from collecting 25 junk cars in his yard because he's gonna fix him and Mary from painting her house bright yellow, pink, and green to show her love for the rainbow. That stuff is good, keeps the neighborhood neat and tidy and makes sure property values hold steady. Unfortunately, the average person doesn't really want to bother running an HOA and instead a lot of tight rule book thumping crazies who get off on forcing people to walk on tight ropes show up. That's why there's an almost inexhaustible supply of insane HOA stories virtually anywhere you look. A good HOA is mostly quiet. They keep things relatively normal, make sure you don't get your neighbor crazy Ivan painting his house rainbow and putting mannequins all over the overgrown front lawn. That stuff will make the property of nearby homes take a nosedive, so it actually matters. In addition, if you've ever seen a neighborhood with a public pool or court, odds are that HOA maintains it. After all, who else would? You read about a lot of bad HOAs on Reddit because they're bad. It's hard to get 1000 karma talking about how one's HOA is doing everything properly. One of my friends lives in a HOA a neighborhood that runs villas, which is a fancy way of saying duplexes. The fees pay for groundskeeping, snow removal, and communal area upkeep, pool and barbecue pit picnic area. The only complaint that he has is that he knows for a fact he could get all of these services cheaper, but they are contracted out to friends and family of the HOA board members. Nobody votes them out because they leave people alone over the pet. Somebody taught this board, one crime at a time. I will never understand it. It wouldn't be worth it to me, unless there was some kind of hoarder situation that was really, really, really bringing the property values down. Then you'd want one, but that's about it. That can cause a world of hurt too. Your home typically represents the largest investment you will make in your lifetime, and depreciation of that investment can have dire consequences that can leave you bankrupt. For example, let's say you buy a $500,000 home in a nice neighborhood, but then the next door homeowners move out and rent it to section 8 or something. Within a year, the lawn is full of weeds and mostly dead from lack of watering, bushes overgrown, immobile rusty cars are parked on it, the neighbor's sun spray paints a mural of a woman with her legs spread on the entirety of the garage door, aluminum foil is placed over all the windows, and so forth, but there is no authority there to say they can't do those things or have to maintain the property. No one is going to buy your home anymore, so you may now find that your $500,000 investment is actually only worth $250,000 or less, and you may not be able to afford $250,000 depreciation. Other nearby homes may have also already panicked and cut their losses and sold their homes at severely discounted rates, which has attracted lower income people that may likewise not maintain their properties to the same standard. You're now bankrupt through no fault of your own thanks to the actions of the nearby homeowners. That was the original intent of a HOA, was to maintain a certain standard to protect people's investments, but of course there will always be some corruption when human governments are involved. That said, a lot of the time the people 
Watching at HOAS are the guys with broken vehicles in their yard or that are annoyed that their request to put up a chain link fence in front of their house to keep their pit bulls in was declined, and are the very people that would cost their neighbors dearly on resale value. We like our HOA, but some of the horror stories from these power-hungry morons who get themselves on boards, makes me wonder if it's worth it. I find that retired engineers are the worst, they are aimed by nature, they are drawn to these HOA boards like flies to fat, retired city planners are not much better. We had one retired engineer who got on the HOA board that would walk around the neighborhood with a can of orange spray paint, if you had a crack in your sidewalk he would highlight it in the orange paint. Then he would put a notice on your door demanding that you fix the crack or the HOA would do it and put a lien on your house. The next quarterly meeting we voted to take the orange paint from Jerry and chain him to his porch rocker. This is one of the best revenge stories posted here, all civil and no threats of violence etc. It's also not likely to be true, even with ignoring all the justice or stuff written in. Please don't try this in your state without full approval of an attorney. In my state, HOAs can foreclose on your property for fines, without going before a judge. They really do have as much power as people are afraid they do. If you enjoyed this week's effective way to waste time, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. If you are enjoying the series, leave me a comment below. A special shout out to the content creators. You frickin' rock.